I'd like to talk about integers and the number line. So when we talk about mathematics, there's lots of different types of numbers. And, and, and so far you haven't seen this, and you, you will as we go on, but one type of numbers are called integers. And these are the numbers that you've been dealing with mostly. You know, one, two, three, four, these whole numbers, these are, are integers. The way that I was taught to think about them was using this thing called the, the number line. And I, I don't know what people use these days, but it's, it's a useful way to think. A number line is like a ruler in which you have, you know, some line, and like a ruler, we start at zero, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, and then this, putting an arrow there like that, and it goes off to infinity. You can count these, so this symbol, that sideways eight, that means infinity. So this number line, we start zero, we can count forward. These numbers are integers. <coughs> and this is the way to think about uh, addition and subtraction and our place in space. It, it's something that as you become better at mathematics and you start thinking about you know, other dimensions and other types of numbers, Keeping this in mind is, is, is a way to, to help you uh, visualize it in your head. So number lines are, are really good for learning things like addition, right? If I start at zero and I say, well, I'm going to start zero, I'm going to take three steps forward, one, two, three. Well, what I just did is I went one, two, three. The operation is zero plus three is equal to three. And, you know, you can take another step forward. I could say, you know, I'm going to go one more step forward. Three plus one is equal to four. Right? This is stuff that you probably understand already. You also probably understand that when you're at four, you can go backwards. Let's say I want to take three steps backwards. I can go one, two, three. So I've got 4 minus 3 is equal to 1, right? And I, I know it, it looks very simple, but I'm showing you this because I want to illustrate something. If I take 1 minus 1, it takes me to 0. 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. What if I take 0 minus 2? Well, what we do is we take this number line and we continue it. So this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So this side of the number line we call these positive integers. This side of the number line, we call negative integers. And these negative integers, just like the positive integers that go off to positive infinity, well, these negative integers, they go off to negative infinity. And you have just as many negative integers as you have positive integers. So, if I am at zero here, and I say, I want to take two steps backwards, one, two. Well, then I go one, two backwards, and that puts me at negative two. So I just took zero minus two is equal to negative two. And from negative two, let's uh, take one more step backwards. If I do that, negative 2 minus 1 is equal to negative 3. So all we're doing here is moving on the number line. And then we can, from negative 3, we can take steps forward again. So 
So let's say that I want to move to say two steps forward. One, two. So negative three plus two is equal to negative one, because that's where I am on the number line. And all of these negative numbers, they allow you to, to do all sorts of things. Like for example, let's say, you know, I'll start at zero again. And I'm gonna go two steps forward, one, two, so zero plus two is equal to two. And then let's take uh, five steps backwards. One, two, three, four, five. So two minus five is equal to negative three. So the number line is a way of visualizing our numbers and recognizing that we have positive numbers and negative numbers. And these are really useful. And you'll see this in the, in the future, how useful negative numbers are. Uh, they're also real. I mean, by that, I mean you can certainly have negative quantities. Like, for example, if you borrow money from the bank, well, then you owe the bank money, so you have negative money in the bank. So we use negative numbers all the time in real life. Uh, other things about this that are, that are kind of uh, worth mentioning? Uh, as far as the, the, the method for thinking, I just showed you, I just showed you 2 minus 5 is equal to negative 3, right? And that's kind of tough to, to, to think about how you're going to write that. And we talked about methods for subtraction. So let me uh, erase this number line. So talking about methods for subtracting, if we have, say, uh, 7 plus 5 is bigger. 7 minus 3, we can write it in this column format, like I showed you, and we get 4. And the reason that we can do that is because 7 is larger than 3. What if instead we had, what if we had uh, 4 minus 5 in this column format? Well, we, we can't do it. But what we can do is we can say, hey, the top number is smaller than the bottom number. So what I'm going to do, and there's some math behind this too, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite this as 5 minus 4, and then I put a negative sign in my answer. So 5 minus 4 is negative 1. So you can't write that, but you can write this. So the method that I showed you for subtraction, in which you had these columns and you subtracted from them, it all works just fine, but you have to recognize that the top always has to be bigger than the bottom. And if you ever has have a situation where it's not, then you, you can't uh, take the subtraction you have to flip the order and put a negative sign in the answer. Because that's like being at, at uh, 2 and taking 3 steps backwards, which puts you at negative 1. So this is negative numbers and the number line. And the numbers we're talking about, and which we've always been talking about so far, have been integers.